<clears throat> ready? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do it. Diana, b before we begin, yeah. can you please give me a fish review? <laughs> what do you think about my Batman glasses I'm going to retail? I think they're perfect for the birthday boy. <laughs> Happy birthday! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, first and foremost. Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to this different style video that we're going to do today. Uh, so I'm here with Diana. And she came to me with a good idea. She was like, Jabril, you're about to start this little computer science adventure. Why not give some background on what's up with that? And I agreed, so. So I'm going to interview <laughs> you. Yes. On your channel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Thanks for the assist. Yeah. I suck at intros. That's what's going on here. <laughs> this is our 17th take. Also, I'm the channel <laughs> physics girl, and, and we work together. And <laughs> I'm going to dive deep into your background and your deepest dreams and fears. She got the intro covered. <laughs> Let's do this. So, bro, I want to start a little bit further back. I want to know when you first got into programming and when that was. Like, how old were you? I want to say, I think it was video game. It was definitely video games, without a question. And it was around age like 12 or so. I had just got out of elementary school and went to middle school. And I had always had an interest in, you know, just the, the magic of video games. And so, you know, you'd always get the question, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And like, just because it's so mysterious to me, it was always like, I want to be a computer scientist. So, I, I didn't say that. You said that? that? No, I didn't say that. I said I want to like make video games or whatever kids oh, would say. Oh, that's cute, right? yeah. And I came across this thing called Game Maker, in which it was a really simple tool that you can use and get a game up and running because, you know, you didn't have to know code. So anyways, I see these examples that this thing made and asked my mom to purchase it for me. It was about like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that. And, because I've been saying it for so long, she bought it for me, and then just like, that was the end of all my free time <laughs> from that point on. Which is awesome. <laughs> Did you then take any programming classes in high school? Have you ever taken any programming classes? I've never took any formal programming classes. Really? I don't know, I consider, you know, just the, the resource of the internet to be a class of sorts, mm -hmm. you know? It's obviously, the one thing I hate about the like internet resource as a class is that you don't have that one-on-one -on -one relation with the actual teacher. So like if there's something that I really don't understand, I can't say like, hey, Mr. Johnson, can you like- Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, can you please like <laughs> show me, uh, you know, more in depth what this is doing? You know? Yeah, if you didn't take any classes, you started out with Game Maker. That was your initial inspiration, was wanting to make video games. And then from there, how did you teach yourself programming? How did you go about it? What was the process like? I honestly think, you know, just on a broader sense, it's not so much about teaching myself program, it's more so teaching myself how to look for the right things, right? So back to the example of like not being able to have the one-on-one -on -one experience with the teacher. So let's say that there's something that has like a for loop in the middle of this, this program that I'm trying to replicate, right? And I don't understand what a for loop is. I can't say, hey, what's a for loop? I mean, I can post a comment on YouTube, but will they get back to me? I don't know. Will they explain in depth? I don't know. So like what over the years has taught me is like just how to ask the right questions, right? Like how can I figure out, someone else obviously is teaching this more in depth. So like how can I figure out you know, how to find that person that would teach this thing more in depth. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't programmed for a while, but if you're making like a, a loaf of bread mm -hmm. and you want to use flour, like you could just go get flour. Someone else has made that for you yeah. versus growing it and refining your own flour. Someone else has already done it. You don't yeah. have to reinvent the wheel. They've probably found, found a more efficient way for doing that. Then you, you can just take that and use it in your program. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, for sure. You know what's interesting about that exactly is that like, there, there are some things in which like you, you need flour as an ingredient for like let's just say for your program and then there's also things where you need like iron or like mm. coal or something mm -hmm. that's like a little more dangerous not as easy to mm. obtain and so it's like i have no choice but to get coal that someone else has already mined mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah i mean it's something that you would have to spend much longer learning how to do I think it's really important to find that thing that keeps you interested and that's the reason that you learn. Hmm. So for you, it's machine learning. Yeah. And I know because I work in your office, I was spending a lot of time with you, like trying to learn how machines learn. They're trying to learn about machine learning. What do you think it is about machine learning and neural networks that has captured your imagination enough that you want to spend the time on this? That honestly goes back to the origin story of, of why I like computer science is when I first was playing video games, obviously I'm the controller, like I'm telling this agent what to do within the video game environment, but, but there's also AI that's running around and doing their own thing. So, um, so that got you interested in machine learning? 
Well, okay, so so moving on from that, right? I was I don't know, 13, 14 or something like that, and I seen this demo of like the I think it was probably one of the first actual visual neural network applications mm. by Carl Max or Carl Sims, one of the two. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so he trained he tra he he created this environment in which it's just literally shapes, geometric shapes that are they're uh, combined together with joints, mm. right? And so these joints can move based on the axis of the joints, like it, mm. it just does random movements. But he applied a neural network to them. So over time, these random movements optimized for whatever goal he gave mm. them. Mm -hmm. And like being a kid, I'm just sitting there like, what? what is this? Like we're literally watching simulated life, like simulated biology within a computer. So we've gotten a little bit, like almost there, to the importance of, of teaching yourself through examples. Like mm. project-based learning mm. is so important for kids because this is how people naturally learn. And like case in point is you. <laughs> You're teaching yourself through all these different projects. Um, you've been recently teaching yourself calculus. Yeah. Like what motivated you to suddenly teach yourself new math? Most people don't just sit down and they're like, I want to learn some new math I never learned in school. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because I think that is the appropriate thing to say. I would never say that. You know, I you would never, never say what? I would never say, oh, I just want to learn derivatives today. Yeah. I just want to learn calculus today. Yeah. And I, I didn't say that in the process of learning that. I had an end goal. Like, I, I, there was something that I wanted to achieve. What was your end goal in learning calculus? So I needed to learn calculus to be able to write neural networks, to be able to teach computers how to do stuff, machine learning. And that just happened to be a roadblock in the way of getting to where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could either get to the roadblock and say, all right, time to turn around or try and blast through it. You yeah. Know? And so. So like the passion for learning how to make neural networks is strong enough that you're going to learn calculus. Yeah. That's freaking <laughs> awesome. Did you go to college after high school? I did. So I get to college. And I guess I had to take a placement test, and I have never done well with, with testing, and I failed. And they put me in Algebra 1 or something like that, Geometry or something. Mm -hmm. I was like three courses away from getting actual college credits for math. And so I switched over to uh, film, but I went to a film high school, so like I learned a lot of the stuff that they were teaching, and it was just really boring. And then I said, I'll come back to school in a few years and do biology. And it's been way more than a few years. <laughs> <laughs> So you did not finish? No. At the same time though, there there have been times in my life in which like, I don't know, some people looking from the outside in, it's like, oh, you're doing so good. You didn't go to college, why should I? And like, I would never advise someone to not go to college, you know? Like if you have the opportunity, and spe especially if you don't know what you want to do, like get your ass in college, you know? <laughs> and the only reason why I say that is because like, there, there's so much that I've missed out on from not going to college, right? Like, for example, just in contrast with you, there's so many different people in your network that you can call up and ask for advice or ask for, you know, if they have this resource or that, and I don't have that, you know? Like, only people that I'm able to call up are people that I've met via YouTube, right? So that's one thing I missed out on. Another thing is like, you know, you, you never know who you would meet. Like, you're essentially meeting people that have the same interests as you, so mm -hmm. like, who knows, I could have possibly met someone there. Obviously, it wasn't my fate, but just saying, like, I could have met someone that maybe had similar interests in me and we could have started some startup or something like that. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, the Google story. So I would never tell someone, like, don't go to college, even if, like, it, it, it makes sense for them. I would say at least try it. Like, know yeah. why you don't, why you're yeah. not going to college, you know, if anything. Where do you see your career and how do you see it involving computer science? Hmm. Yeah, so I am working on a new computer science show for my channel. Uh, and the reason for that was because I found myself losing a lot of time just writing software and doing game development. And literally to the point where like I didn't upload a video on my channel for like three, four months or something crazy like that. And so like the solution was like, well, obviously if I'm spending this much time on it, it needs to be a part of my YouTube or I need to quit YouTube. And yeah. so um, I'm now working on a new show that I'm going to integrate. And so my, my, I guess my end goal really is just to like grow that channel, but also like write software and release software and have fun and introduce people to like software's not that scary, mm. you know. Um, and hopefully this will enable me to do some really cool collaborations with people because mm. I think that's really fun and important, you know, to, to share experiences with other people that are doing cool stuff as well. 
Uh, so you want to learn more, work on projects, but at the same time use that to do communication on YouTube still. The whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, cool. Yeah, trying to merge it all, you know. I'm really excited. I'm super duper excited just for the fact that like I want to I wanna solve a lot of problems, be it personal or try and take on something a little bigger. Um, and it's just fun. It's just fun. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode, video, thingy thing. I want to give a huge thanks to my good friend, Diana, for bringing up this idea. I think we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Getting to know you. (laughs) Getting to know. Stop. (laughs) Stop it. Stop it, D. You stop. We've known each other for two years, and we still can't make a handshake happen. (laughs) High five. Okay. But yes, please guys, go check out Diana's channel because I actually got to go and ask her some questions about her journey into physics and definitely don't want to miss that. It was fun. It was a good time. Check that out. Link is at the top of the description and uh, I think it's time for us to switch. Yeah, time to switch. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's do it. Yep.